The S24 Ultra is finally here. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at this beautiful phone, tearing it down, and uh, you already know what's coming. We're gonna be doing a transparent mod. Let's see if this looks any better than the S23 Ultra Transparent. This is hands down one of my favorite transparent mods. Let's get right into it. We'll go ahead and remove these seals. My hands are pretty jacked up because I went rock climbing and, well, uh, the rocks scratched me. We'll remove the seals. I did not do a good job doing that. And there it is, the S24 Ultra. So this year's release is obviously very similar to the S23 Ultra, with of course the titanium being a major exception, and the flat display. We can finally put screen protectors on without struggling, so shout out Samsung for doing that. We still have the weird uh, microphone hole here that people mistake as the SIM ejector hole, but uh, I guess that's not going away anytime soon. This feels very nice, I'm not gonna lie. I do like the squared off design more than the rounded screen and rounded edges. We'll go ahead and remove the front screen protector. That was very satisfying. Let's boot this thing on. Something Samsung did this year is they made the bezels a little bit smaller. Always a nice touch. We're getting closer and closer to bezel-less screens, but we're not quite there yet. Now, we'll put this away and I wanna just get right into it. Let's tear this phone down and see if the insides look any different from the S23 Ultra because uh, the hardware isn't that different. We'll pull out the Sucky Sucky 3000. What do you mean by that? No, I'm just kidding. But this device helps us remove Samsung back glass without causing any damage. We'll place the phone inside the machine and now we can just clamp it down. We'll hit vacuum, which basically sucks on the back glass. And now the machine will begin to heat the phone. It does this to soften the adhesive, and once the countdown is over, well, the machine automatically pulls up on the back glass and removes it. So my job is pretty easy here. There we go, the first look at the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Do you guys see the resemblance? I know I do. But there may still be secrets. What the hell was that? Who authorized that? There may still be secrets within, so we're gonna go a little bit deeper. Before we get deeper though, take a look at those massive cameras. Over here, we have our 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, and down here, we have the 200 megapixel wide angle camera and two times optical quality zoom. And then we have the new 50 megapixel five times optical zoom and 10 times optical quality zoom, which basically means using software. Over here, we have the 10 megapixel three times optical zoom camera. This camera is probably the biggest change that they've made to this phone this year. Now it's time to get a closer look at the insides of this S24 Ultra. Will it be exactly the same as the S23 Ultra? Hopefully not, let's find out. We'll begin by unscrewing all of these Phillips screws. There's, uh, there's a lot of them. Now we'll go ahead and pop off these covers. Man, I was really hoping that Samsung gave us a refreshed interior design, but so far it doesn't look like they did. So this bottom loudspeaker actually has the vibration motor in it as well, which saves some space in the phone. We can pop the wireless charger off, and the first thing we'll do is uh, disconnect the battery, because uh, you know what happens if you don't do that. Now we have our first look at the insides of the S24 Ultra and things do look ever so slightly different. This cable seems to be merged together, which I don't believe the S23 Ultra has. And uh, it says, uh, 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 subscribe. Subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying this video. We'll pop off the front earpiece speaker. There we go. 
And it seems like we have an antenna board over here, and then we have our front earpiece speaker with the rubber gasket for waterproofing. Our 12 megapixel front camera is right over here, and it's surrounded by black glue that makes your life incredibly hard if you're trying to remove it. So uh, be careful if you're ever trying to do that. Now we can start disconnecting things. We'll go ahead and start with these flex cables. So there are three flex cables from the subboard to the main board. We'll remove that. Now we can remove that. These cables do look different from last year's. There we go. And check that out. We do have the removable pull tabs that Samsung now include with pretty much all their newer phones. Thank God they did that. It was, uh, wasn't too bad removing the batteries before, but you always did risk puncturing it or damaging it along the way. So this is huge. Thank you, Samsung, for adding this. We, uh, we repair people do appreciate it. And now we should be able to just boom. That is the board and the back cameras. This is a sandwich board like always, meaning there are multiple layers to this board. Let's, uh, let's get a closer look at that board and remove these back cameras because they're huge. Take a look at those back cameras. They're pretty much as big as the board, but it's always very impressive when we see these boards. Look how small this thing is. This is the powerhouse of your phone. This is where everything happens and it just keeps getting smaller and smaller every year. This is uh, remarkably small. We'll unscrew the charging port board. These are usually held by glue underneath so you want to be careful you just pull up on it very slowly assuming you removed the sim tray which i honestly forgot to do now we can remove that thank god we still have sim trays with the s24 ultra i really don't like the switch that apple's trying to push with the eSIM thing i think it's always nice to have the option i am in canada though so remove and this is our charging port board we have a microphone and the SIM card reader, as well as the charging port with the rubber gasket for waterproofing. A lot of people seem to be concerned that if they mistake this hole for the SIM tray ejector pin hole, that they'll damage the microphone, which uh, actually can't happen. Why? Well, the microphone sits above that little cavity, so you're pretty much safe. Next up, let's see how good these pull tabs are. I did not have good luck with Samsung's S23 Ultra pull tabs, so hopefully this is a little bit better. Okay, I'm putting in a lot of force. Ugh. All right, we got the battery off. That wasn't the easiest thing in the world, but the, the pull tab actually held up pretty well. So um, let's put everything back together. The cameras would look really sick with transparent back glass. Let's, uh, let's see if we can make this work. So the way that I do this is I just grab a heat gun, I place it here, turn it on, and see if I can pick the corner of the back glass's vinyl so that I can just peel it straight off. If they did things the same way as they did last year, it should be fairly easy. The vinyl is almost off, but before we can fully remove it, we have to remove the camera glass. This year's camera bumps were really hard to remove, but we managed. And we removed the paint. It's never really come off like this before. I did apply a lot of heat. Anyway, now it's time to go ahead and clean this back glass up so it looks a little more presentable. We'll do so by using some isopropyl alcohol, just kind of squirting it all over, and then just scratching this up, making sure any glue residue is removed or paint residue. We'll use our unscrew mug, although I don't recommend you use it for this. The back glass is all cleaned up. We'll reapply the camera glass. There we go. This was really hard to remove this year. I'm not sure what kind of glue they used, but it was stronger than last year's, that's for sure. And there we go, the S24, oh that's, that's, that's the wrong one. And there we go, the S24 Ultra Transparent Mod. This looks absolutely spectacular, but it does look very similar to the S23 Ultra. 
And this phone doesn't really have that many upgrades over the S23 Ultra, but, but it is still a great phone. However, the AI features this phone has are probably coming to the S23 Ultra anyway in a future update. So is this worth upgrading? Well, I wouldn't really recommend it, especially if you have the S23 Ultra. However, the flat screen design is definitely very cool. And look at how small these bezels are. I mean, that's really something. I'm definitely going to enjoy applying screen protectors on this phone for my customers because the rounded corners really pissed me off when I was trying to do that. Anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. This was really fun to make. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, hit the bell button, ding ding ding, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.